Hey everybody, uh, this is Adam Jones here. Hope you're well. Thanks so much for tuning in to another YouTube video. Um, sorry it's been a few weeks since you've heard from me on, on YouTube. It's been a crazy, crazy time um, as we're all experiencing. Um, and to be honest, the, the last video I put out was obviously kind of amal amalgamated footage from the last session I had on the river season, uh, one of the last sessions I had uh, before all of this started. And since this has started, you know, it's been a it's been an interesting um, time to to want to put a positive uh, spin on everything. It's been very strange not being out on the bank, um, and obviously with um, kind of work and, and all of the stuff that's that's been going on for all of us and looking after our families. Um, I haven't had a chance to kind of put too much stuff together, um, and also didn't want to put too much uh, out there for for you guys because I know it's been a really really busy time. So. Um, I've just wanted to say a massive thank you to, to everybody that's been kind of sending questions and messages and watching the videos. Um, it's been great to kind of interact obviously through this and it's been really, really cool to see lots of you going out there and, and buying up some stuff to, to start lure fishing or if you're kind of into it, kind of adding a few bits and bobs or tweaking your technique or thinking about spots that you're going you're gonna to hit once all of this is over. Um, and that's where the idea for this video has come from. So I'm probably going to do a couple of videos. Uh, just on kind of questions that I've been asked over over the last kind of few weeks um, and questions to be honest that have cropped up over the, the last six months of, of this kind of journey of, of my YouTube channel so far um, and if there are any other ones please bang them in the comments um, or send me a message on, on my Instagram at London Perch Finder um, or drop me a message on my Facebook and I'll try and make a video if it's something that enough people are interested in uh, I will come back to the house studio, kick my wife into the bedroom and, uh, and make a video. So today's video is going to be about BFS bait casters and a little bit about braid because um, I've had a question from Paul Harrison about um, he's just got himself a, a new Older Baron which is absolutely amazing and wants to know a little bit more about the setup and the instructions and stuff um, and I've also had a, a question from the Fly Fisher on Facebook um, regarding braid and it is a question that I get quite a lot. So First thing is I'm just going to look at the basics of um, buying a JDM reel, a Japanese domestic market reel, um, how it comes uh, in the box and obviously the fact that it doesn't come with English instructions. So a little bit of an introduction to bait casters for those that are just getting into this. Um, I'm not going to go into loads of depth on the casting and, and kind of depth, how to set it up blow by blow. I can Something I can do if you guys are interested um, and it's obviously difficult to do at the moment because I'm on a third floor flat with a balcony and I'm pretty sure my neighbors would get annoyed if I was you know casting off the balcony um, but yeah so the basics are once you buy a JDM BFS reel or any JDM reel you're going to get what looks like a normal Daiwa or Shimano or Abu Garcia box um, or any other brand um, and the reel will come nicely packaged but it usually comes with Japanese only instructions they're usually very well annotated some lovely drawings um, the schematics will obviously be in there for the reel as well. Potentially some kind of oil or a reel cover, um, whatever. But there's not usually a huge amount of exp explanation on the reels themselves. So this is my original um, Older Baron BFS XG16. I've had this reel for about two years. As you can probably see, slightly battered. Um, it's taken a lot of usage and this thing is still an absolute beast. We'll still cast one and a half gram uh, with a little shad, so maybe just under two gram jig heads with no problem. I've not done any work on the reel whatsoever. A little bit of oiling, a little bit of cleaning, but that's it. I've not taken it apart. I've not added any bearings. It is an excellent reel. Now, I'm going to start with the basics. So I apologize for those that, that know this already and if it's not useful, but let's just go through kind of the controls that you have on a bait cast, the things that you need to know about. So the first thing is obviously you've got your, your wine the same as you've got uh, on a spinning reel. You've then got your drag on the side here. So this is your drag star. Um, turning this clockwise and anti-clockwise will increase and decrease drag. On the side of all bait casters, so this doesn't, this isn't specific to the older baron. This obviously is one, but um, all bait casters have versions of this. So that's why um, I wanted to do it. So you've got your spool tension on the side. You've got your thumb bar on the back, which is what's allowed, which is what allows you to um, put that into free spool and cast um, and on this side of the reel you're going to have adjustments for your braking system now this is a magnetic braking system it could be a centrifugal braking system 
generally there will, be, there will be an adjustment on the side plate. If there isn't an adjustment on the side plate, there's an adjustment inside the side plate um, and you have to obviously take that apart and adjust various bits and bobs. All of my reels are magnetic braking systems, so I don't have too much experience when it comes to the centrifugal uh, braking systems. Now, if you look on the side plate somewhere on your reel, you're gonna have a locking mechanism, which all that does is stops this side plate from coming off. Um, you need to be able to unlock it so that you can get to your spool and get to the inside of the reel. And like I said, if your braking system adjustment is on the inside, you need to be able to open it as well. So you unlock that, and generally these side plates just click off. So this one is a kind of downward slide like that. Um, some of them might go the other way, but just a nice kind of smooth turn, and that comes off. So you've got your braking mechanism on the inside there, which is adjusted by that dial on the outside. And then you've got your, your spool usually sitting here. If you've got centrifugal brakes, there'll be something on this side as well. Um, you can take the spool out from here. It just a little bit of a twist will come out. The tolerances on BFS reels are very tight usually um, when it comes to how that spool fits into the reel. So if it doesn't come out first time, don't pull and pull and pull. Just give it a nice little twist with your thumb, just a little tweak from left to right, and that will just slide out of the mechanism. Um, that is basically it. So that's how you set it up. You can take the spool out, run the line through the level wind, tie it onto the spool, or use a, a small sticker, or however you want to attach it to the spool. I tend to use just a little bit of backing sticker, and then run the line through that, and then run it over the top with the braid, and I've not had any problems. Other guys will tie it into the ported holes. Some will just tie it straight onto the spool. Some spools have kind of a central um, kind of groove that you can tie the line to. There's various ways of doing it. Do whatever um, makes you comfortable, but that is kind of how you do it. Tie it on, put the spool back in, put the side plate back on. Um, so you put it back into the position where you're taking it off, click it back up, lock this here. Always lock the back of your reels. Now, most reels, for example, there's the Abu Garcia BF8. There's its locking mechanism on the back. Um, this is the Daiwa Steez Air TW. There's the locking mechanism on the bottom. Um, most reels will have a locking mechanism. Make sure that it's locked. Otherwise, when you're playing that fish of a lifetime, there is a possibility that that side plate will come off, which is not ideal um, for obviously controlling your spool. Um, that's it. So when it comes to setting up the reel, the only other thing I'll say is if you first time you've got one of these, stick it on a rod, obviously put whatever line you've decided, fluor or braid, which we can touch on in a sec, um, stick it on your rod, go outside into the garden, have, I would say, a mid-range weight for whatever reel it is you're casting. So for this, I would, to start off with, look at maybe three and a half grams um, with something like the Abu Garcia BF8. I would look at something like five grams just so that you're right inside its wheelhouse something that the reel is definitely able to handle you don't have to worry too much about spool speed and brake um kind of pressure and all that type of stuff so that you can really get used to how the reel works so first things first put say a three gram jig head and a little shad on here uh, go out into the garden tie it obviously onto the end of your rod take the thumb bar off and then just lightly let go of the spool. And what will happen is two things. Either the bait will drop or the bait will just hang when you let go of the, um, the thumb bar. So then you need to either increase or decrease the um, spool tension with this knob here, first and foremost. Um, so for me, I tend to, with lures, just get them dropping nice and slowly so that when they hit the floor, the reel doesn't overwind. And then just take it up a touch beyond that so make it run just slightly faster so that you have to stop it with your thumb but it's not going to go absolutely crazy when it hits the ground once that's set up you're basically ready to cast if you go and watch something like the real test on youtube or type in casting bait casters there's loads of guys out there and um, that have done videos as well on kind of how to set these up and people have various ways of doing it and um, some will do it kind of just so that the spool is kind of limiting side to side play um, all of these methods do work and it is just about kind of whatever works for you um, but a lot of the guys will then turn the brakes all the way up um, and start casting if you've got the brakes up too high you're going to lose distance you're going to lose accuracy it's about then playing with those brakes until you get to an optimal place that you can control the spool with your thumb in the cast um, without losing distance 
but controlling the slowing motion of the spool. If you cast a fast spool with low brakes, you may find that as the, the bait is running out of speed, as the, the weight that you're casting is running out of speed, the spool is now running faster than that bait is pulling line. And it's at that point that you get an overrun. So edge on the side of caution, make your spool tension just ever so slightly more than side to side play, give yourself ever so slightly more breaks than you will further down the line, and then just mess around. Start feeling what it's like to, to underarm cast, kind of nice smooth um, casting motions. You don't want to flick a, BF, a BFS rod um, or a bait caster in general, because if you've not got the weight to kind of then keep carrying the bait out, you get almost like a, a, a kind of reverberation on the rod tip and you'll give yourself backlashes and bits and bobs like that. Um, so yeah, air on the side of caution, get out in the garden, start small, get bigger, um, and then you can start playing with lowering your spool tension, lowering your brakes, controlling it a little bit more with your thumb, um, and getting into more of those kind of higher tariff um, casting moves. But if I'm honest, just stick with the basics to start off with, uh, mess around, and you'll be absolutely fine. So hopefully, Paul, that's been useful. Um, if there are any other questions, please let me know. And like I said, when this is all over and I can get outside, I'll do a more specific video on just how to set up each lure type um, and kind of how to go about casting them. So the next thing is line setup. So there are two options. Um, well, there are obviously more than two options, but the main two options for putting line on these reels are fluorocarbon and braid. Um, a lot of people use fluorocarbon with their BFS fishing um, for various reasons. Obviously, you don't have to tie leader knots um, is one of the first reasons. Leader knots can get stuck on the eyes of the rod as you're casting out light, lighter and lighter baits. And the lighter you go with these reels, the more refined the, um, the spinning of the spool is versus obviously the weight of the lure. And even a small kind of tick, 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 tick on the way out with a badly tied knot can cause an overrun on the reel as you get down into the lower weights. Um, you won't find a problem casting them in the kind of mid to higher weight range. Um, but you do have to be spot on if you're using braid with your uh, with your leader knot. You don't have to be complicated with your leader knot. You need the knot to be very tidy um, and you need the line to kind of match up with whatever braid that you're using. Um, so obviously that reason for fluorocarbon. Um, and some guys will say that you get more distance with your fluorocarbon. The downside is you can't get very much on the spool. Um, on some of the really shallow spools, you really can't get a lot on the spool. Um, and like one of my mates, Jason Vorster, um, on uh, BFS Jedi says, you know, you've, if with the really, really kind of shallow spools, you can end up in, in a position where one or two snags and you have to re-spool the whole reel. Um, but he still uses fluorocarbon and still swears by it. So there's something in it. For me, braid is the answer. That's because, you know, being in the, the UK and European market, we're all used to that feel, that kind of instant... Um, sensitivity that you get with braid and that is the direction that I've gone um, braid isn't perfect and if you get it wrong it can be a pain in the backside on these reels um, so there's two main things with braid for me you need an eight strand braid the reason being that it has a rounder profile than a four strand braid so it doesn't cut in on itself on the uh, on the spool and you need to go up in breaking strain which is the opposite of what you usually do with finesse fishing. So the way I see my braided line on my BFS reel is I see it more like a fly line in the sense that it's, it's something that's helping me carry my, my weight and my leader to the fish. Um, so my finesse comes from my three to eight, nine pound leaders that I'll use um, rather than coming from the finesse of the breaking strain of the braid. Um, there's good things and bad things to that. So the good thing is that if you go up to a 12 or 14 pound eight strand, really good quality braid, doesn't have to be expensive. I'm using HTO Nebula on one of my reels. I've been using this line for most of, that's probably three, the last three or four months. Um, had no issues with it, no kind of snap offs or, or any of those things. And that's because it's got a decent breaking strain. It's eight strands. It's still very low diameter. So you're looking at 0.6 or 0.8 PE, which matches really nicely to a three, four, five, six, seven, eight pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. Uh, so you don't notice the difference in terms of the taper of the line, obviously. 
but you do need to be cognizant of the fact that your braid is going to overpower your rod. So obviously your leader is going to break before your braid, but if you loop around a tree and it's the braid, braid, tree to braid to rod, your braid, if you pull into it with your rod, is gonna be stronger than most of the BFS rods. Something to be cognizant of, it's not something I've ever had an issue with because like I said, I'm fishing the finesse on the leader. Um, I get all the benefits of braid. I get the, the low stretch, the, the high sensitivity, um, but that's the way that I've gone with it. So the reason I've gone that way is because if you go too light on your braid, when you're stopping lures, when you're getting you know the slight overrun or you hammer your thumb on the spool or you know the, the standard, you've, you've wanged it at a boat and you've realized mid cast, you're new to it, you've realized mid cast that it's flying straight at a window on the side of a boat, think Christ I've got to stop that you put your thumb on the spool to stop it the the bait dips the line goes kind of fully tight and snaps and the bait just flies off and the, the line snaps that's because you're using generally a, a four strand braid that's cut into itself potentially but it's also not got the breaking strain to deal with those types of forces so yeah that's why I've gone slightly higher in the breaking strain but still go down the eight strand um, the braided option because obviously the diameter is so small that you can fish it with pretty much anything but if you want to, you can go, go down the fluorocarbon option um, and it's something that I'm going to mess around with more in the trout season this year um, and probably put some fluorocarbon on my, on my new Daiwa. And when I'm not fully concerned about not being able to see anything and wanting to feel the bites, like for example when I'm fishing for perch, uh, then I don't see as much of an issue with using fluorocarbon and it does mean that I don't need to tie that leader knot. So leader knot, just the last thing, I use a four turn water knot or as me and Brett have now called it a four turn water knot. Um, it has, it's a super simple knot, just a loop, four turns out the other side. You can make it really small. Um, you can obviously tighten it right down and it's never failed me so far for my perch fishing. Um, and it's a really, really easy, fast to tie knot on the bank. So there are loads out there. It's, it's low profile and it works for me, but there are various options that you can tie. So again, if there are any questions, let me know. Hope that's been interesting. Um, I'm gonna have a little look at what else I've got in the questions. If there's any more questions on, on this video, I'll look at making another one as well. Um, but thanks so much to Paul and Fly Fisher on, on Facebook for asking. And uh, I will speak to you guys very, very soon. Like I said, if you've enjoyed these videos, please like and subscribe. Um, and uh, I will speak to you guys very, very soon.